Boom. It is recording. All right. So my presentation is on the U.S.'s petroleum dependency and how the U.S. is highly dependent on oil as its major fuel source. So my main abstract is about how as technology progresses and chemical engineering processes improve, uh, the U.S. becomes more and more, uh, well, their dependency on oil is reduced because as technology improves, we can basically create, we can stretch our oil even further. But unfortunately, oil is a limited resource, so we're eventually going to run out. And so we ultimately need to improve our technology and invest in other fuel sources in order to create a new alternative for oil in the long run. So oil currently makes up about 40% of all the fossil fuels used throughout the world, and 70% of that oil is used just for transportation, so just your cars, boats, planes, things like that. And so ultimately, at, at the rate we're going, we're going to use up our fuel resources within the next like 100 years. But as we continue to imp in, uh, improve refining oil and other chemical engineering processes, we can basically make our oil last longer. So like cars are getting more fuel efficient and we're basically be able to create more barrels of oil per amount of oil that's drilled because our refining processes are getting better. But unfortunately, we still need to invest in areas like natural gas and nuclear power so we can ultimately have an alternative in the long run. So the quest to find new sustainable uh, fuels is also important because of the environmental impact that oil currently has. Uh, carbon emissions from things like cars and boats and planes, they're bad for the environment. Whereas like nuclear power and solar power and wind power are a little more environmentally helpful and they have less of a negative impact, which also shows why finding an alternative is incredibly important. And so by having uh, the need for the U.S.'s dependency reduced, we'll create economic advantages also for the U.S. in that we won't be as dependent on other countries for our own fuel sources and energy sources. So this shows the process that is used to refine oil. So it begins with atmospheric distillation used to separate heat and crude oils from heavy oils and light oils. And then it's further distilled to extract the oils into the specific components and make them like more pure. And then ultimately the oils are turned into useful products such as like the gas you put in your car that, or the energy that's used to power planes and boats and things like that. And then ultimately those products are blended into their final products and then shipped out. So the benefits of reducing our dependency on oil are reduced energy costs, lower carbon footprints, we'll reduce environmental damage and we'll become more economically independent as a country. And we'll also create more long-term stable, like sustainable energy, as well as more diversified fuel sources so we won't be as dependent on like one source. And that way in case anything happens to say nuclear power or wind power will still have the alternatives. And then it'll also reduce like public and private transportation costs. So like the cost of oil and like filling your car up is expensive right now, but with other fuel sources, hopefully those costs will go down and you'll have more money to spend yourself. And it also sh allows you to shift your economic focus onto other areas. Cause right now energy is like one of the main areas of focus in technology. We're super dependent on trying to find energy sources and how to create long-term energy. But once we have a solution to that, we'll be able to shift our focus onto new technology and find other solutions. Um, so ultimately the biggest obstacle to this is creating technological improvements. So we need to create new technology that allows us to find long-term sustainable energy sources and create things like sustainable nuclear power plants without, uh, without hazardous uh, side effects such as like Chernobyl and things like that. Because ultimately disasters like that are way worse than not having a fuel source at all. So we basically need to balance out having sustainable fuel as well as the environmental impacts of that fuel. And the biggest way to do that is to invest more into research and engineering of these products. And so that's where chemical engineering comes into play because chemical engineering is big on creating new fuel sources and energy and ultimately R&D into new, into like petroleum industries and companies like ExxonMobil and BP. And so hopefully we can one day create technology that allows those companies to transition away from oil and into things like nuclear power and other sources of energy, because unfortunately oil is a limited resource. And so this shows a chart of how the U.S.'s current uh, consumption of fuels is based. So petroleum makes up 40 percent, while natural gas is 23 and coal is another 23. But unfortunately coal and petroleum are limited sources and those will run out much faster than natural gas will. But ultimately, the biggest thing we need to do is expand nuclear power and renewable energy into much bigger parts of the, parts of the pie. 
So when those become over like 50, 60%, we'll ultimately be able to find a longer sustainable source of energy. And so this shows country by country cons uh, consumption. And so like the US and China and Japan are like some of the largest users of uh, oil with the US being just head and shoulders above everybody else because oil is in everything we do. We drive cars every day. And so because of that, we have, and in the US we have like tens of millions of cars in this country. So we burn through oil at an incredible rate. And unfortunately that's not sustainable, but when we do run out, it's gonna impact us the most. So that's why it's incredibly important for us to find a solution. And in conclusion, uh, petroleum has dominated the fuel industry for years and years and years, but we need to change that because we are gonna run out within the near future. And so if we don't do something about it, we're not going to have fuel in the long run. And that's going to be really bad for us, both economically and just socially. And so ultimately, we need to create a new energy source. Otherwise, the environment's going to be impacted, we're going to be impacted, and the economy is going to be impacted. And any questions? Yes. So are you a believer in peak oil, like the oil, oil crisis? I'm assuming you are, because yeah, this cause... whole discussion is about that. Do you ever know? Like a rough estimate of when our, our it's theoretically, if we if we stay the same path. So based off what I've seen, it's like fifty years is like the max or the minimum. So like, uh, in fifty years, that's like the low estimate of when we're out, and the high estimate's about like one hundred and fifty years. Okay. But that all depends on whether we find new sources of oil that we like. Based on the current sources we have, we'll run out in fifty years. Okay. But if we find new sources, we may be able to make it to one hundred and fifty years. But that's also assuming our current usage. And as more people are born and more people are alive on this planet, we'll oh, use yeah. oil at a faster rate. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? I don't think so. All right.